Okay, good morning, folks. Uh, we're going to get back to this. Um, before we get back to that, let's look at some Photoshop news from the weekend. I think this actually happened uh, just just after. Um, well, I mean, I found out about it just after class on Thursday. Uh, this fella here. Um, uh, and they're not the only ones who do. Uh, at, uh, Fox News um, liked this guy at that um, autonomous zone. Um, the one in Seattle. Um, I think because he looks like an armed bad guy and they're kind of presenting that to their viewers. Um, so they came up with this composite. Um, this is Detroit. This is... Uh, Washington, I think. Um, they have a good example of it here. Uh, ah, here's all of them, actually. Um, so, we'll go back to the beginning. This, uh, you know, is where people would enter that place where there's no police. And this is the guy. Uh, I don't think you see a lot of um, really left-wing people that are armed. <laughs> so, when you get one, especially when they're a really good mat, note, note how easily he can be pulled out. Uh, good chance they could click that um, character button in Photoshop and they could get most of them. Uh, and this one, I want to say, I think this was Detroit. Uh, and I forget where this one was. But when you put it all together, you get that. Um, which was on the front cover of their news. Um, there's a couple interesting tells here. Uh, well, the lighting is very wrong. Um, also, you notice he's blurrier. Um, remember when I... Uh, I wonder if we can... Oh, they won't let me. You know what I can do is I can open it in a new window. And this will probably let me go in on it. Yeah. Um, so remember... Uh, this was back with the um, when we were sticking ourselves in those photos. We blurred everything to make it match. You'll notice they did that here. They blurred him, and they blurred this a bit, and it kind of all blends together. Uh, this also gets to the lighting problem, because he very clearly has a light here and here, um, and the rest of the scene does not. To make it even odder, uh, you see how we can see a shadow of someone here? Uh, if we go back to his actual photo... And I always think these things are interesting. You see what people do. Um, this guy is casting a shadow on him, which would make sense, right? Um, there's a light behind him. It's coming down. It's hitting here. Uh, that would explain the light over here, too. Over here, there's nothing making that shadow. I mean, I guess you could assume... Well, you can't really. Anyway, um, photo manipulation, Photoshop... Every single photo you see online goes through Photoshop. Well, I wouldn't say every. Ninety-eight percent of every photo you see online goes through Photoshop. I think every photo you see in the newspapers goes through Photoshop. Uh, regardless, you can see how easy it is to manipulate these things. Um, we're are we manipulating right now? We are. Um, at a certain point, this is going to become painting when you get right down to it. Um, I want to show you a bunch of uh, other selection techniques, and I'll show you what we've got to uh, and where we are. And actually, I can back off this to here. Uh, this is my original photo, which is not a very good question. There is one you can always ask. Um, we were looking at the histograms on this, which we see is very low, and the first thing I do to this is I color correct it. And basically, by color correcting it, I'm just stretching out the range of the thing. Um, I use a couple filters then, actually. I use them slightly differently than I showed them to you. Uh, the first filter I'm going to use... Uh, well, actually, that's not a filter. That's me straightening it. Um, everything will get easier later if I straighten it. That's my first filter. This is dust and scratches. If you look over here, 
there's some dust, there's a piece of hair. And when I run that filter well, I get rid of a lot of that. Then I do the shake removal. And it's funny, notice what happens to the histogram when I do the shake removal. This is before shake removal. My histogram is kind of ragged up here. See that? And when I do it, my histogram gets much smoother. Here's an interesting thing that happened. When I remove the shake blur, I suddenly get more dust. There, 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 there. And of course, I had to paint out a lot of dust. Um, so I have to do more dust painting, dust busting. We talked about that last week. Uh, and I have to run that filter again. If you look here, this is without me dust busting using the, um, the uh, Band-Aid tool to get rid of stuff. And white speck of dust there, white speck of dust here, 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 here. If you look around here where all those white specks of dust are, that's running the filter again and doing a bunch of cleanup. So this becomes my basis. Okay, um, now here's a thing. I mean, is it a thing? This is April in Paris. Uh, I want to say 1873, if it's somewhere around there. Uh, so they're on a, a lawn, uh, some sort of yard down here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to fix this stuff down here. Um, so I'm going to have to work a really careful mat to get all that. A cutout. Um, here's my uh, quick select tool, and I have it set to six pixels wide, which grabs me pretty good hunks. Uh, remember, one of the tricks with this, and you see me holding down the shift key, is that I let go of the shift key every now and again. And here's why. I have that mat, let's say, and I like it. Then I accidentally go like this. Well, if I undo it, I only go back to the last time I hit the shift key and stopped. So you, if I put lots and lots of work into this mat, well, that would be, that would be trouble. That would be big trouble. Um, and now we have to get into some precision work. You can see under this chair, uh, I'm going to be better off painting under that chair. For example, I have to get that out of there. Um, you know what? Let's go to quick mask mode. There's our quick mask. And we'll grab our brush over here. Uh, and is that going to give me what I want? Yeah, that will. I know that's part of the chair, so I can keep it out of there, which is good. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll make that a little bit more precise. God damn it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to flip these and we'll do a little subtraction work while we're here, too. Because we may as well get stuff while we can get it. Hmm. Okay. I'm sort of liking that. Let's leave Quick Mask. Um, I would have to put a lot of time and energy into this mat. Um, so much so, I might want to save it. Um, if you go into select, I can save a selection. And let's say I already put a lot of work into this. I can load a selection too. That's not the right selection, but hey. <laughs> let's see if you'll get, oh, that's it. Uh, operation, uh, new selection, that's my document, uh, this is it, grass and flowers, good, okay, so this is a selection I spent a lot of time working on, so I saved it, I saved it as grass and flowers in the image, so I'd have it to use later, um, you know, I, I've talked about how this program is, um, 30% of this program is selection, and the real power in a program like this is the power to select, the power to look in at what's there and get it and do what you want with it. Uh, so if you put a lot of time and energy into a selection, remember right there, you can load and save them.
it's worth doing. And while we're here, I'm going to go here just to get to select and mask. We can look more closely at our selection and mask. Um, this is showing me the wrong thing, and the reason it's doing that is I have too many damn layers open. Let's go to, let's go to that. I hope that's the right one. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, that's the right one. Um, you see, I have a lot of layers in here. I should name my layers too, by the way. Uh, let me go back to selected mask now. Good. That's what I want to see. Um, there's a bunch of tools they've added into selected mask to make it more functional. Uh, we've shown transparency before, and I probably want to get it to there so I can figure out what I want and what I don't want. Um, but Yeah, control Z. Uh, I want to zoom in here, uh, and that should let me do it. Scrubby zoom, there we go. Uh, I might want to fix this bottom down here. Um, for example, I have some chair leg in there I don't want. Do I? Uh, let's look down here a bit, and we'll check where we are. Oh, you know what I would like to get? I would like to get some of this stuff down here. Um, there's a paintbrush tool. There. I have it on plus. I have it on 13. I can actually do a little bit of quick masking right here. I can do a lot of quick masking right here, actually. Uh, let's get that. And we'll get this. Uh, that's a boot, I'm pretty certain. Although, let me slide my... See what we're getting here. Ah. Yeah, I think I want to get all of this. To get into what's going to be my grass. My grass and flowers. Although, part of that's his boot. I'm wrong. Uh, let's go negative. Okay, let's go over here. We have under the chair, I like that. We have under part of this chair over here, I like that. Uh, we're good over there. Um, I'm wondering here if I'm missing something. I don't know, I think that's a coat hanging back. A lot of these are judgment calls, obviously. You know what, let's get more of this under the chair. Oh, wrong one. And I could even change the size of this brush and, you know, the characteristics of it and what have you if I want. Ah, we have my no our normal brush tools. So I can make it bigger or smaller or change how hard it is. Those various things. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. I want to turn this up a bit. Good. You know what? Do I want to... I'm going to fix a little bit more wood down here. Ah. There we go. Uh, I think that's chair there. Uh, so, let's go to minus here and we will... Ah. We will pull down. We'll say that that's part of the chair. We'll say that that's part of the chair. I could probably fine tune those, but. Now, I think that's a pretty good mat. I think. Um, let's check it here. Uh, that mat is good enough for me to resave it, actually. I would say. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't love a little bit. I got a little bit of brick over here. Ah! I don't want to go that far away. I'm scrolling back and forth with the magnifier tool here. 
Yeah, see, there's a little edge of brick there, uh, which I think I'll clean out. Oop, uh, we'll flip that around. Oh, I went the wrong way. I want to make sure that this doesn't get included in my mat. Okay. Uh, as you can imagine, I could spend hours and hours and hours on this. Um, I probably also want to... Uh, I might want to blur the edge a little. If I feather it a little bit. See how that's feathering inward? I might want to shift the edge outward a little bit. That seems pretty good to me. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm going to hit OK. Now I have this as a selection. Let's save this as another selection. Select, save selection. Uh, we're going to call this um, grass and uh, better grass. Okay. So if I lose it again, that won't be a problem. Um, let's turn it into its own layer now. Copy, edit, paste. So now we have its own layer and it's not selected. Um, now I can start to do some more color correction to it. Um, I'm going to go under image uh, and I'm going to go to adjustments. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is look at brightness and contrast. Um, just to see what's down there. If I bring up the brightness down there, as you can see, there's a whole little garden down there. Oh. And I missed some leg here, but that's okay. I'll fix it later. Um, interestingly, because I left the color in this, there's still color down there, which is kind of weird. If it wasn't color originally, it just defaulted to a kind of strange color. I probably don't want it that hot. I probably want it somewhere like that. Uh, and I now want to get some color in there. Image, adjustments. We're going to go to U and saturation. Uh, this is a different way of looking at color. Normally we're looking at red, green, and blue, 0 to 255. U saturation lightness has one channel that's every color, one channel how intense that color is, and one channel lightness how bright that color is. Now, I actually want to colorize this, so if I click this, it instantly adds a color to it. It's not a color I want. I probably want something around there. And we could decide how much color that gets. It could get super green. Um, although I would have to do the white separately. But I, you know what I bet I can do? If I put it to where the grass is pretty much the where I want it to be. Let's say. I like that. And by the way, we could say here, here. See where we can go with that. Um, now we have these flowers here, which wouldn't be green. Um, let's make a new layer. New layer. Uh, oh, it went way up to the top of my world. Where did it go? I should name these things. I'm not naming them, but I should. Uh, I probably should also save... Um, we're going to try new layer again. No, oh, you're not even going to give me a layer, are you? Uh, I want to grab a paintbrush, just so you know where we're going with this. And I think I'm stuck in some strange mode. This happens. It's Photoshop, after all. What strange mode am I in? I'm in some selection mode. I bet you anything, there's some weird window somewhere that opened like that, way on a different screen that I couldn't find. Um, so layer 7 is actually the new layer I want. I'm going to hit OK. And it makes me the new blank layer on top of that. Now, let's grab that there paintbrush here. Um, 14, is 14 good? We want a loose and sloppy brush. Isn't that sloppy? 
Maybe. We'll see. Something like that. Oh, yeah, that I like. Okay. And uh, we want to pick a color for those flowers. I'm going to pick a bright yellow. Because bright yellow is what they probably be. They might be. What do you call those damn things? You know, you blow on them and then they're... Anyway, they might be those. I don't know. Um, I'm going to hop in here and on this new layer, if I splash some of that, ah, I want that layer to apply itself as what? Ooh, as a color burn. Yes. So as a color burn, wherever I hit it, And you can see, I don't have to be that accurate here because um, we're just sort of splotching color on top of this. We'll put some down there. A couple of Is it that it has to be yellow? Like if you chose pink, then would it just turn brown mixed with the green? Let's find out. We'll go for a pink. Better pick than that. Okay, that's a... Let's get a good pink. That's a good pink. And... They're going darker, but you know what I could do? Actually, I sort of like that as a purple offset to them. Purple one there. Here. Uh, like I said, at a certain point, this gets to be... You're basically painting the thing. <laughs> um... I can also mess around with the modes. That's color burn. Let's see what our other choices are. Lots of different good choices. Color dodge. Soft light. What's hard light do? Vivid light. These are basically all different ways of applying this layer. And again, I can also do multiple layers, remember. That's just saturation. Color. Ooh. That's sort of what we're looking for where it will just affect the color. So now my, uh, we'll put in some more pink ones. We'll make this brush a little softer around the edges because again, I can be sloppy with this. Um, there's sort of an interesting thing about, uh, do I want to be that sloppy with it? Well, let's see what happens when I splurge some of that in there. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of getting away with that. Um, the human eye uh, sees uh, a very high resolution black and white image with a very low resolution color image on top of it. Uh, let's get some more yellow back in there. Let's assume these people were somewhere beautiful. Good. Uh, so you don't actually need to be that precise with the color parts. Um, if you back out, I, I probably would want to smudge them around a little bit, and uh, that's why we got the finger. Oh, that's not my finger. Where's my finger? Finger, 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 finger. Uh, smudge. You know what I'm going to use instead? I'm going to use blur. So I think blur is going to get me closer to where I want to be. Da -da -da -da. Blur that a little. Yeah, that's good. Blur these guys a bit. Those guys over there. Get some blur on that. Much more attractive space, yes? Um, now let's do something else that's kind of hard. Uh, these water spots. These water spots annoy me. I can see two big splotches right there. There and there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them out. Um, I'm going to grab a selection on them, and then I'm just going to do a color correction within them. Uh, unfortunately, they won't pull well. Um, let's put this background copy here. And we'll turn it on, and we'll work on it. And what I mean by they won't pull well is if I'm sitting on that layer, and I'm trying to grab those, I hold down my Shift key, they just don't grab that well. Um, I would do much better with a quick mask, although 
since we were already doing quick mask and selected mask, maybe we should do it there again. I left too many layers on. Let's let's hit cancel there, uh, and we'll turn off this layer, and we'll go back to selected mask. Good. Um, and now, now, uh, now I can sort of gently paint where those two marks are. Uh, we'll grab our brush tool. How big is that? Oh, yeah, that's about the right size. Now, having a tablet wouldn't hurt for this at all, by the way. Because pulling it with a mouse is, you know, uh, it's a little rinky-dink. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but what I'm really concerned about is just getting it out of the image. Uh, because they're bright, they stand out. Yeah. Not perfectly, uh, it's not even close to perfect, is it? But, if I can grab something roughly around it, show it straighter over here. And, this is where our feathering is going to help a lot. Oh yeah, that's that's probably not too bad, frankly. Um, I'm going to be okay with that. I might even want to, since I put the time into it. I mean, not that much time, but anyway. Uh, let's save another selection. Uh, we'll call this watermarks. In case we need it later. Um, Let's make a new layer out of it. Edit, copy, edit, paste. Uh, now, let's see if we can um, get rid of it. Image, uh, I'm going to go with just brightness and contrast to see if I can pull the brightness down. Oh, yeah. And play around with the contrast. Oh, it's when I hit that right mouse button by mistake. Let's go down. Oh, I turned my preview off. Pfft. See, we don't want to make it worse either. It might be that I did the pants separately because the bottom can look good uh, and the pants can look not good. In fact, maybe I will do that. Should I do that? Yeah, why not? We'll hit OK. Layers are free. Um, let's just uh, give ourselves a big old square block selection here. Uh, we'll select those pants. Uh, edit, copy, edit. You know, I should have been more accurate on the pants. Let's let's not be so sloppy with this, huh? Uh, let's uh, do let's deselect, deselect, and um, I will use uh, I use something I almost never use the lasso. It doesn't have to be that precise, but I want to get everything that's on the pants. Oh, and I left the damn layers on. Although that gives me some idea what it's doing. Yeah, that'll that'll probably work. Uh, if I feather it a bit. Okay, let's uh, copy that. Let's paste that new layer, which I should call Pants Fix. And then let's... Fix those pants. Okay, so let's see where our pants are here. Uh, oh, that's that's our flower color. Pants, 
pants. Pants sort of fixed. Okay. Um, then I got to keep going, right? Let's turn on some background there too. See where we're going with this. If we do this well enough, we should be able to make it seem like it was shot yesterday. Uh, that's a big goal, by the way. Uh, but as you see, you have a lot of freedom on it. Um, I'm going to talk more tomorrow about uh, some of the particular masking techniques to get things like boots and wood and what have you when we might want to put other things in there and then this is a big question how are we going to deal with this banister back here because we might have to do something about it over here okay uh, okay we covered a lot of things there folks um we covered a bunch of stuff about selections a bunch of stuff about select and mask uh mixing color modes Ooh, you know what i just realized i covered up one of my um I covered up one of my better uh, layers. Isn't that a shame? Uh, it's you, I bet. Because I did some stuff earlier, I'm not going to lie. Uh, that's my pants. This is where naming these would have made a lot more sense. There they are. I wanted to leave my colored flowers back in there. Because you see, I have, I have two different versions of that grass. Uh, but I like this one better. Makes it seem kind of more pleasant, doesn't it? Um, okay, go to it, folks. We're here to help. Sheldon's handy. Uh, I, I don't know why. I sort of like this project. Um, you also should think about this because you probably have home photos. You might even have home black and white photos. This is a useful skill. There's actually people who used to make a living doing just this. There are people who make a living doing just this today. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll talk more tomorrow. Get to painting this image.